Hey there, this is going to be just a uh, very, very introductory video to Inkscape, just to show you the lay of the land, basically. There's a lot of stuff on this screen when you first open up this program that can be a little bit intimidating. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the basic things that you're going to be using a lot of the time if you make cut files for uh, crickets or silhouettes. Um, so this box that goes around is uh, not really all that important. When you save a file at the end, it's not going to be there. The only purpose I've found for it myself so far is when you upload a file later to like a Facebook group or something and you see the little preview button next to it, when you click that preview button, all that you're going to see is anything that's inside this box. So I usually keep it here just for that purpose, but if you want to get rid of it, file, document properties, show page border and it disappears. Basically all of the things on the left side of the screen are going to help you to make objects and get them on the screen and all of the things on the top are going to be to manipulate and edit those objects for the most part. Um, the, you have these little shape buttons here. You have a square and a circle, um, stars and polygons. If you click on one of these buttons you can just drag a shape out any dimensions you want. If you see I can make like a that circle is obviously not a circle. If I want to make it a actual circle, if you click and hit control at the same time, hold your control button, it'll actually drag out to a perfect circle. This up here is your selector button. When you click that, you'll see that the item you're looking at, you actually select the whole item now. Um, this is your text button. I can type some text once I click that. Change the font up here, change the size, change all different things, but we'll get to that later. Um, back to the selector, and now you select it and you can move it around again. You have this one here is for Bezier curves, and if you notice too, you get these little pop-up texts whenever you hover over any of these buttons that will help you know what you're clicking on. Bezier is good for making either just straight lines in any kind of weird configuration. If I want to do a triangle, I go click, 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 click. Whoops, I apparently clicked down here somewhere first. Oh no, I didn't. That's because I have triangle in. So anyway, that's to make those. I'm going to get rid of that one. You can also make with it flourishes. If I click here, and then click and hold, click and hold, click and hold. And then when you right click, it turns it into something. And then you have a little flourish that you can mess with. That'll be a whole separate <laughs> video on making those though. Um, don't mind that I'm going fast, I just want to show you what some of the different buttons do. Um, the fill tool right here is like your little paint bucket. You can only fill objects that are considered bounded. They have to be a solid shape. But if I click that and click on yellow and change one of my letters, it's now yellow. Not only does it change, it doesn't actually change the color. My original object is still there. This makes a new one. Now I have a little yellow E. I still have my name here, and it's still, still a text object that I can change. But this now, add, that's how you add layers of color. Um, if I, right now this is just text, if you ever opened anything in like design space and it tells you that text elements will be dropped, that's one of them. You have to turn them into paths. So up here, the file menu, obviously you're going to use for new and save and all of the obvious ones. You can, if you find an image on Google and you want to bring it in and trace it, you import and we'll go to... I go to my ECL logo. I don't change any of these settings, but so now it's going to bring it in. And if you notice, it's solid. You can't see through it. If I take this object and go to trace, again, I'm just going fast. I'm not actually showing you how to do this. I'll show you how to do this at another time. And I trace this. I now have two. This one. If you notice, you can see through. You can see that black line right through it. That's your good one. This one, 
delete. Get rid of it. So that's how you bring things in. That's traced. This can now be used. You can take it apart and have layers of it. Um, object you're going to use fill and stroke is to um, you can change the thickness of your lines. You can make lines, dotted lines, um, things like that. All of these raise lower, raise the top is to layer. If I want, if I have my red layer there, and I raise that to the top, it's now above the blue one. That comes in handy sometimes. Um, you can rotate things, you can flip them. If I flip this red piece vertically, flip it upside down 180 degrees. Um, align and distribute is good. You can, if you select a couple of different objects and then center them, it lines them all up for you. Let me get this where you can see it. If I want these centered perfectly, you can also center them horizontally. You can distribute things. If you have like a whole group of circles, you can distribute them evenly across your screen instead of trying to eyeball it. Um, path. You're going to use these a lot. Object to path turns things like writing into, so you can do this. and take that and go object to path. Now, that is no longer text. You can't edit that as text anymore. It's now a group of five objects. So there's one. And while I'm at it, each of those objects so these little buttons, those are the nodes. This is the node editor. If I click on that, I select the object. If I click on that, I can actually move the individual nodes. You can change the shape of things. You can clean things up with that. Um, but each of those little buttons is basically where your machine's blade is going to touch down. So if you have something that the design space tells you is too complicated or too big, it probably has way too many nodes, and you can come in here and clean it up. Um, union is the equivalent of like weld. If I go back to my selector and select all those items, you can weld them together. Now it's all one object. And no matter what you do with it, you bring in another program, it's going to stay all one object. Um, so these all do different things like that. Division is how you like slice something out of something else. Um, combine and break apart. I'll have to get to that. That's another complicated. Um, linked offset. I love linked offset. This is how you make shadow text. I should probably make the shadow a different color. Lighter color. This is how you make a bigger layer of the same object behind it. Uh, simplify will take, I was just talking about how many nodes there are, if you do simplify it's not going to work too well on this because it's already pretty simple. If you take a really complicated object with 8 billion nodes and hit simplify, it'll sort of smooth out all the edges so that you have a lot less nodes. Um, text drop down, you can put your text on a path to turn it into a shape. You can also do the same thing with path effects, but we'll get to that. So these basically are all, a lot of these get more in depth, but all of these things in the drop downs help you manipulate and work with the objects that you created over here. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, I am going to work on specific videos to do certain tasks. Uh, one quick thing that, <laughs> that I probably should have mentioned, if you hold the control button and scroll with your mouse, you can zoom in and out. You'll see my screen zoom in and out and you won't know why. Um, that's helpful too. But, so hopefully this was helpful and uh, I will work on some other ones to do specific things. If there's any specific uh, kind of projects that you want to be able to learn how to do and you don't know how to do it, just shoot me a message and I will work on it. Thanks a lot.